Are you ready, Deacon? Hey, shalom, everybody. Shalom, most on Christ, blessed. Happy Sabbath. I want to adjust something real quick, briefly before I start class. And I'm not going to finish it tonight. I'm telling you right now, it's too much. It's too, too much, too much. I'm going to have to be two parts. Because I got to go into this. I have to deal with this first. Um, yeah, Romans. Yeah, 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 hold on, Deacon. Please don't give us a, a yow sap, please. He's all the way in North Carolina. Please, brother. <laughs> It's going to be a yow sap. Yow sap, you know, I love you, brother, but you know I'm saying? I don't want the brother to go that way out in a day of fasting, okay? It's going to be a yow sap. No, I, I, I'm not going to be too long. Um, real quick, Romans um, 16 and verse 1. The book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 1. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Centuria, Centuria. That ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a succourer of many, and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all churches of the Gentiles. Our brothers, our, our brothers scattered abroad. Go ahead. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Because they had a church in their house. Go ahead. Salute my well-beloved, Epinetus, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. I'm the first ones to wake up over there. Go ahead. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Go ahead. Salute Andronicus and Junea, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. That's what I want. Who were in Christ before before me. Paul gained a level of, of understanding that was damn near. In fact, most of the New Testament is Paul's letters. Mm. And now Peter, James, and John were the elders, but a lot of understanding was bestowed upon Paul. But Paul understood his place, understood his position. Many brothers, I went over a class a long time ago about how our forefathers, there were instances where as righteous as they were, they made mistakes. David, it was a man after the Lord's own heart. Had a man killed for his wife. Made mistakes. We forgave David, right? You don't hold it against him. Otherwise, he wouldn't be reading Psalms. You read about Noah. Noah was a man that was considered, considered perfect. So all of his family got killed in the flood, went and got drunk. Son mocked him. Drunkenness is wrong. Yet we respect Noah as a righteous man. You go into King Solomon. Solomon was one of the wisest men that ever lived. Wrote Proverbs, Song of Solomon, Wisdom of Solomon. Um, so what else? Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, you read all these things as the instructions in righteousness. The man had 700 wives, 300 concubines, all of his wives were morons, and he fought behind his heathen wives. And yet we hold him as a glorious man, do we not? Righteous man. Made a mistake and he wrote about it. He said, listen, don't do what I did. Ecclesiastes is a book of warning. Proverbs chapters 1 through 5 through 7. Don't do what I did. I was young and dumb, wealthy, had nothing but time. Don't do what I did. So he made mistakes, and yet we honor these men because they were men. Because the point is that they were men, and they were wise men, men who had years of understanding, years of experience. Y'all follow thus far? So Paul, as a man of God, had respect for those men who were before him in this truth, whether they were before him 10 years, tw um, 15 years, or 20-plus years. You have men that make mistakes, and oftentimes they're at their lowest. And just because they're at their lowest doesn't mean you disrespect those men at all for any reasons whatsoever. But the nigger will do that. The Negro will see his brothers down, and rather than exhort him and encourage him to do better or, to, or, or at least be there for him, he's going to try to sun him. Nah, nigga, you, you, you below me now. I'm Don't do that. Because regardless of... His position, he's still elder than you. I don't care what status he is now, he's still elder above you. Based upon years of time and experience. And he has done things for the truth that you have never accomplished yet, babes. So understand me very well. Do not be disrespectful to brothers who are raised over you. And then they fall, issues arise that put them in a, in a, low, in a bad situation. And all of a sudden... I'm over you. No, don't do that because I put you under him. I make you a visitor. Don't do that. 
So the same thing can happen to you. That's why Paul said, I salute those who were before me. Give me Job real quick. Job 32, you want to say something? Yeah. Go ahead. I want to I give an example of that, right? Now, you know, um, the region that I'm over, he had a couple of brothers that I, have to, that I had to take, take their rank. Okay, they, these brothers, they made mistakes. Some brothers, they house was out of order. So I had to take them down from the office that they was at. And mind you, these brothers that I had to take some of their rank, they've been here, they've been amongst us for like six, seven years. They senior in the congregation. Right. You understand? And this is this is what took place. The brother got to condong here, brother now. He's going over the scriptures with the young men. Mm -hmm. The young men asking him scriptures and he explaining it to them. Now uh, another brother that's an officer of 10. Remember, this brother been with us for like seven years. He was he used to be one of the dudes over the school, mm -hmm. all right? So a younger brother come to him and said, brother, you out of order. You should not be going over no scriptures with these men. You know, this, this is what they telling the brother that helped build that school up out there. You understand? So I'm like, yo, who said that? That don't make no sense. I said, don't let me got to tell him straight. Don't let me got to intervene in that right there. You understand? So you know what I did? You know, I let them men and them know, listen, Whoever dealing with the, these senior men that I took down because uh, the because as I said people make mistakes, you understand? No matter how great you you could make a mistake. So these senior men that was taken down from this camp, I'm not going to say which camp it was. Mm -hmm. You understand? But these senior men, I say, you know what? I'm going to put. I want them to deal with other senior men. These young officers of ten, I don't want them dealing with them. You understand? Because that's some evil stuff. For a brother to be overcoming a fault and you to try to son him or to try to treat him, treat him like crap because the same brother, I know he used to be hard on brothers. You know what I mean? And he used to correct brothers. So now the same brothers he was hard on and used to correct, no, they are over him. Mm -hmm. So you know some brothers, they very hold they hold grudge and stuff like that. So now they try to son brothers and disrespect brothers. You brother that roll, brothers that rolling in that spirit, you all should not be doing that, man. You understand? Yeah. You can hide that. Get Job 1 and 1 real quick. Now, when you examine Job, we're going to read what the Lord said about him. Job 1 and 1. Job chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. So, Job was considered to be a perfect man that feared God and eschewed evil, right? So, when you read later on, the Lord and Satan had a wager. Listen, the Lord, Satan said, I guarantee you, I can make that man curse you to your face. And the Lord said, okay, fine, because he saw something in Job that if he did this to him, it would make him better, stronger. It was a trial. Now, Job was a righteous man, perfect man in the eyes of the Lord, but there was something the Lord saw in him that allowed, that allowed him to, to take Satan's offer, to put him through trials, killing his, turning his wife against him, taking away his wealth. Um, hurting, um, injuring him in terms of his health, killing his children. A lot of things happened. His children got killed. All kinds of stuff happened. So we're going to read Job uh, 32 because Job, the problem was that even though he was righteous, he knew he was righteous. And he, he, he was high-minded about himself. That was his issue. So the Lord checked him. So when you read, when his, when, um, his friends came, whatever, they didn't exhort him. They started bashing him like you brothers are doing now. They started bashing him saying, see, it's your fault this, it's your fault that. Not seeing a bigger picture. Not seeing what this is about regarding Job's situation. So they gave him wrong counsel. So we're going to read what the young man, the spirit of the Lord jumped in this young man amongst them, the youngest of them. His name is Elahu. And we're going to read what he says regarding, don't get, don't, don't, don't get excited. Elahu. Um, his name was Elahu, and the spirit jumped on him. Watch this. Verse 1. Job chapter 32, verse 1. So these three men ceased to answer Job. Because they were saying things to Job, and Job had a, um, a, was snapped back at them. So at this point, they had nothing to say to him at this point. Go ahead. Because he was righteous in his own eyes. See? Because he was righteous in his eyes. Like, oh, why does this happen to me? I do this. I teach. I've helped people. I've so-and-so. Why does this happen to me? He started questioning God after a while. Go ahead. Then Out was, of frustration. Go ahead. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite of the kindred of Ram against Job 
his was his wrath kindled. So this young man got upset with Job and the men that were with him. Go ahead. Because he justified himself rather than God. Go ahead. Also against his three friends was his wrath kindled because they had no answer and yet had condemned Job. They couldn't answer Job's questions, yet they condemned him anyway. Go ahead. Now Elihu had waited till Job had spoken. Elihu had waited until Job had spoken. He waited his time because a man shows wisdom in his silence. Go ahead. Because they were elder than he. Because what? Because they were elder than he. Because they were older than him. He had respect for men who were older than him, whether in understanding or in age. Elder than him. Yeah. Even though Job was talking nonsense. Yeah, get that thing. And I was like, yo, you're talking stupid, but out of respect for you as in my elder, yeah. I'm still going to speak when, I'm, when it's time for me to speak. That's right. He knew his place, even when Job was going off. But that second, and his friends too, who are also elder than him. Yep. Read on. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. And Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. I'm a young man. And you, you, Job, and your boys here, y'all are older men. Go ahead. Wherefore I was afraid, and durst not show you mine opinion. I was afraid. And was almost scared to say anything. But they were talking so reckless, the spirit of the Lord moved them to say, you know what, I can't stand by, let this go on. I, he, didn't, he didn't allow himself to be bashful, like I be saying all the time. He wasn't bashful. He was afraid because he, he respected these men. He feared them, but he realized these guys are going off. I got to say something. This is wrong. Go ahead. I said, days should speak. I, I believed in my mind that the age, days, a man's days should speak wisdom. Go ahead. And multitude of years should teach wisdom. Go ahead. But there is a spirit in a man. But man makes mistakes. There's a spirit in man that can cause him to go off. Even with all the days and age, but the years of understanding this truth, he can make mistakes. This young man, this young man, understood that. You have grown men amongst us that can't understand that, so they all bugged out their mind now. But they can't understand that there's a spirit in man. Go ahead. And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Go ahead. Great men are not always wise. Right. Neither do the aged understand judgment. We're going to Job and his friends. Referring to Job and his friends. So older men, aged men, they can make mistakes. Go ahead. Therefore I said, hearken to me. I also will show mine opinion. Go ahead. Behold, I waited for your words. I gave ear to your reasons whilst ye searched out what to say. Yea, I attended unto you, and behold, there was none of you that convinced Job or that answered his words. Lest you should say, we have found out wisdom. God thrusteth him down, not man. God thrust him down, not man. So what I'm showing you is that this young man, regardless of what he saw in the spirit regarding these men's behavior and their, and their, and their lacking of, of wisdom at that time, including Job, he still showed respect to the men that were aged, that were elder than him. Y'all understand? Do not ever be disrespectful to the brothers that spirit. There's a saying in the world, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Do not bite the hand that feeds you. And we have a lot of biters that left out of here. A lot of them. Now Satan got them. Enjoy, Satan. Now let's get Matthew 12 and 38. I'm going to go to the class now. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, I got one scripture I want to bring out on what you just mentioned. Yeah. Go to Galatians 6 and 1. Galatians 6 and 1. Right. As I said, some, some brothers, y'all, y'all, when brothers fall or brothers make mistakes, some of y'all that just be waiting there to destroy that brother. Right. To hear the brother already down. And you kicking him while he's down. That make no sense at all, man. And any of you brothers doing that, y'all evil as hell, man. You know, and I see these things happen with my own eyes. I like, yo, for real? These brothers dealing like that because he's not an officer no more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but read this scripture real quick. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault. If a man be overtaken in a fault, meaning you, 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 you be end up overcoming with some, something. Some overcome you. Read on. Ye which are spiritual. Restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. The scripture said, if you are a spiritual man, 
you're going to restore that brother in the spirit of meekness. But in order for you to restore that brother, what that brother got to first do? He got to say, he got to repent. He got to say, listen, I'm sorry. What I did was wrong. So any brother come, on, come to us and say, listen, I made a mistake. I'm sorry for what I did. The scripture, he repented of what he did. Listen, the scripture says we got to restore that brother in the spirit of meekness. That's only if you're spiritual. If you ain't spiritual, you're going to try to destroy that brother. You understand? That's what you're going to try to do. But read on. Considering thyself. Why it says considering thyself? Mm -hmm. Why does it say that? Because we all are not perfect. You understand? And time going to come in this truth where each one of you brothers is going to fall and make mistakes. You understand? And you got to examine yourself because you got to examine, you got to say, damn, if this happened to me, how would I want brothers to deal with me? Mm -hmm. You understand? That's why it say you got to examine yourself. Because the same way how that man fell, how that man was overcoming a fault, is the same way you could be overcoming a fault. Because none of you all up inside here is perfect. None of us is perfect. Okay, read on. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. What does that mean, lest thou also be tempted? Meaning, no say and jump on you and you dealing with that brother evil. You trying to destroy that brother. You dealing with that brother evil now. You understand? No, you, you in the midst of sin. You all understand that? If a brother is overcoming a fault and you don't deal with that brother right once that brother repents, and you deal with that brother even, no, you in the midst of sin. All right? Read that part again. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Least Satan tempt you also. Least thou also be tempted. That's it? Yeah, that's it. That's all right. It. There may be a situation where you may be found at fault, for no reason at all, and get taken down. It may happen to you. Some, some things may come up. Brothers may be evil as hell, plot against you, get you taken down, and you don't even deserve to be taken down. But you eat it. You take it like Christ did. Reviled, yet he didn't revile him, reviled not. Threatened, yet he was threatened, yet threatened not. He suffered wrongfully, righteously. You understand what I'm saying? He was wrongfully, he, he suffered wrongfully, but right and righteous at the same time. He ate it. And it says that he left behind that example. So some of you in here may go through some situation where you may have men around you who are slimy scumbag snakes that will plot to have you taken down, and then you're down. Okay, well, I'm down now. Okay, no, I'll take it. I'll eat it. And then, you, and then brothers will come around kicking you. Yeah, yeah, you, you ain't an elder no more. You ain't an officer no more, captain no more. Don't do that because it may happen to you. So to say, consider yourself. Wisdom of Solomon, real quick, one more. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and verse 22. I'm going to go to my class. Be mindful of the things you do. Wisdom of Solomon 12, verse 22. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12, verse 22. Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, thou scorchest our enemies a thousand times more. So the Lord will chasten us, and he chastens our enemies a thousand times more. Go ahead. To the intent that when we judge... To the intent that when we judge we, someone, go ahead, amongst ourselves, go ahead. We should carefully think of thy goodness. We should carefully think of your mercy towards us when we judge someone. Go ahead. And when we ourselves are judged... When we ourselves are judged, go ahead. We, we should look for mercy. We should look for mercy. So the Lord chastens our enemies a thousand times. Worse than us. But imagine what he can do to us if we're worthy of that same judgment. So he's saying, when you, time for you to judge someone, time for you to judge somebody, consider how merciful the Lord is not doing that same thing to you he does to our enemies. You understand? He's saying here, basically, consider yourself and be merciful. You understand? Read on. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks. And gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. The wine, go ahead. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Go ahead. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. I'm going to hold this back. I'm going to drink this year. I'll drink it with you and you get the victory. We'll drink together. Because, they, because they're going to be a lot of betrayer. <laughs> right. Because they're going to be no, a I'm lot of betrayer. I'm not going to drink this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You notice that. When, uh, when, uh, when he told Christ if he's him, right? Mm -hmm. You notice that Christ make a statement, said he's going to be betrayed, this and that, right? 
It's like each one of us say there today. Class come out. We say, brother, there's going to be some scary. Is there going to be some Judas scary among mm-hmm. you? I don't think I can. Ne- there's a brother who told me, person say, uh, to me, he said, Deacon Lava, I mean, you will, get, you, uh, uh, you will get out of the truth before me. You know what I'm saying? After mm-hmm. I check his, uh, check his simple behind. Mm-hmm. Then where you at today? It's not there. You understand? All of us have the mindset, it's not me, it's not me. Mm-hmm. But if it's not true, it's not true. Has you been examining yourself faithfully? Have you been uh, put a, a, a sure foundation for yourself? Uh, oh, sister, oh, brother, have you been done that? Or are you just been focused on watching TV, MTV, and BET shows that you like? Then when the devil come, you don't, you don't see him. You know this, too. Why they was doing all that to Christ. Where was the man who talking about? You know, I will fight for you. I will yep. do, but he's in the corner now. Yeah, you understand? That's how he's saying that. Be mindful of your vain words, man. Yep. Go ahead. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, this fellow was also of Jesus of Nazareth. Hey, aren't you Jesus boy? Aren't you one of his boys? Go ahead. And again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. I don't know him. Go ahead. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech bereath thee. You sound like him. You, then, you one of him. Go ahead. One of them. Go ahead. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. I don't know him. And immediately... The cock crew. Well, Christ said, before the cock crow, you're going to deny me three times. And as soon as he denied me the third time, the cock crow. Go ahead. It's, and now, Pe- it's getting early now. The morning's coming in. Go ahead. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus, the word of Jesus, which said unto him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. Do you remember what he said? Remember he, was, he realized, I'm full of crap. I lied. I couldn't let him do it. I didn't do what I said I was going to do. Go to, where you at? That was Matt, what was that? Matthew 26? Yeah. Go to Mark 14. Yeah, you know what's so heavy behind that? That you would have think that, I mean, that Christ walking with these men, you would think that the the word was loyalty. You understand? Mm-hmm. Then you think Peter was, you know what I mean? The word he pulled out here was loyalty. I'm going to be with you, this and that. But when it's time now to follow what the scripture saying, Peter fold. You know what I mean? Peter fold. Like a lot of us, we have the mindset. You understand? We have the mindset. To come up in here, yo, I'm with your guys. I'm with you with this one. I'm I'm with you. Whatever whatever you have to take for me to get there, I'm with you. Then when it's like little tribulation come, you're willing to bail out. It's the same thing Peter just did. Mm-hmm. Mark 14, verse 55. Mark chapter 14, verse 55. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witnesses against witness against Jesus to put him to death. And found none. Go ahead. But many bear false witness against him. Many spoke against him. Many slandered him. Lied on him. Go ahead. But their witness agreed not together. But they couldn't agree. They couldn't agree on it. it, it, it their, their stories didn't match up to use against him. Go ahead. And there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hey, hands. Hold on. Hold on. What, what we just read that there, yeah, what that tell you about witnesses? What mm-hmm. that tell you about witnesses? Mm-hmm. That you can, if somebody come to you and say, listen, I got two, three, four witnesses. And we are, you don't listen to all witnesses. That's what that's showing you. When the witnesses come and they tell you, present the matter, whatever, you listen to it, you examine it, and you don't listen to all witnesses. This is what we just read in here. That's what that show you. Read that again one more time. It says, verse 56, for many bear false witness against him. But their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain and bare false witness against them, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And within three days, I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witness agree together. Right there, neither so. That's it. Neither so did their witness agree together. They didn't agree together. They had to find the, the, the stories didn't match up. So their witnesses was thrown out. Was, we can't use this. But when Christ spoke of himself and said, you're going to see me in my glory, he said, see, the hell with the witnesses, we got them. But we all witnesses right here of him saying the same thing, that he's the son of God. So we got him. We can put him to death. What do y'all say? Put him to death. I agree. Put him to death. Go to Mark 14 and verse 30. We're going to jump up. Verse 30. Mark 14, verse 30. And Jesus saith unto him. Read verse uh, 29. 29. 
But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Remember that? Go ahead. Verse 30. And Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. So Mark gives more elaboration. Before the cock crow twice, you will deny me thrice. Now it says the cock crow, and it says this night. Huh. So it's morning at night. Sounds like dawn, doesn't it, Neil Blabber? Sounds like dawn. <laughs> getting hot up Common in here. sense. He's, get, he's going to get Common hot up sense. in here. This day, even this night. Because cocks crow in the morning. Yet he said this night, the cock will crow. <laughs> oh, God. You want me to read it again? Why do you watch us? Uh, read it again. Matthew chapter 14. 30. Verse 30. And Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, this day, even in this night, night before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. thrice. Now, we jump to verse 66. Matthew chapter 14, verse 66. And as Peter was beneath in the palace. As he was beneath in the palace. Go ahead. When he followed them, when they took Christ away. Go ahead. There cometh one of the maids of the high priest. Or servants. Go ahead. And when she saw Peter warming himself. At what? At the fire. She, she, go ahead. She looked upon him and said, and thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. Go ahead. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know that. I don't know him. Go ahead. And he went out into the porch and the cock crew. One time. And a maid saw him again. And began to say to them that stood by, this is one of them. This is one of them. And Go he, ahead. And he denied it again. And a, little, uh, and a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, surely thou art one of them. For thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth there too. So Galileans had a certain way they spoke that, that separated from everybody else. Because Christ was born, well, he was born in Bethlehem, but raised in Galilee. Peter was, was born in Galilee. Most of the disciples are Galileans. So they had their own way they spoke. People say, hey, you guys are Galileans, the way you sound. Hey, hey you know where Galilee, where that, you know, you all know that scripture that says, can anything good come from Galilee? The hood. Because Galilee was the hood. Yeah. You understand? God, that goes back to Corinthians where the Lord said he, he used the base things to come, right. to confound those, the wise of this world. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. Go ahead. And the second time the cock crew. The second time the cock crew. Before crow, before cock twice, he would deny him thrice. Go ahead. And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him. Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And, and when he thought thereon, he wept. So Mark gave elaboration on the terms of the cock crowing. He gave more elaborate understanding. Cock, cock crow twice. You understand? Nothing different. Just something left out. Mark fills in the gap. Go to Luke 22, verse 40. Luke 22, verse 40. Luke 22, verse 40. We're going to read verse 40 to 44. I think we'll be all the way down to 60, 62. Okay. Verse 40 to 62. Okay. Luke chapter 22, verse 40. And when he was at the palace, he said the unto place. them. When he was at the place, he said unto them. Pray that ye enter not into temptation. I remember this. Go ahead. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Go ahead. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. See what happened? An angel to come down and comfort him. It's going to be all right. You can do this. It's going to be all right. Matthew left that out. Mark left that out. Luke puts it in. You understand? So the angel came down from heaven, appeared, and had to calm him down because he was emotional at this time, and rightfully so. Go ahead. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. That's how much he was sweating. He was terrified at this point, praying. That's why he asked the disciples, yo, what you falling asleep for? I need y'all with me at this point because he needed support. Go ahead. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. 
And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude. And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? My friend, where art thou? You betrayed your friend with a kiss, so now he's giving you the whole thing he said. The whole statement's being said. My friend, where did you come from? Or you betrayed me with a kiss. He kissed him. Or you betrayed me with a kiss. So he gives more elaborate what Christ said to him after that. You understand? So he's filling the sentence. The whole statement being made. They're all saying each thing they heard. He heard, friend, where art thou? Then he heard him say, but betrayest me with a kiss? That's what he heard. You understand? Go ahead. When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? Nah, that wasn't, that wasn't put in there. They go, yo, should we strike? Yo, you ready to go? They wasn't scared. So you ready to go? We want to take them down? Go ahead. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Doesn't elaborate who it was. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said, suffer ye thus far. That's enough. Go ahead. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves. I want you to stop for a second and read verse 51 again. 51 again. And Jesus answered and said, suffer ye thus far. Stop. Go ahead. And he touched his ear and healed him. You would think that was enough. Man, put your ear, heal your ear. They're like, nah, we're we still going to kill you. That's how evil Jake is. We're still going to kill him. But they knew who he was. They knew, who he, they knew he was who he said he was. Read on. Go back to verse um, 53. 53. When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me. Uh -huh. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. This is your hour and the power of, and it's time for me to go. Hour of darkness. Go ahead. Dark then, times. Go ahead. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. Caiaphas. And Peter followed afar off. I remember this. Go ahead. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. See? That's why it's the warmest, so it, they, they set the fire. Peter went to it to get his hands warm. Remember, he warmed his hands in the same fire. Go ahead. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him. Hey, this man was with him. Go ahead. And he denied him, say, and he denied him saying, woman, I know him not. I don't know him. Go ahead. And after a little while, another saw him and said, thou art also of them. And Peter said, man, I am not. Man, I'm not. <laughs> man. That's Jake. Man, no, I'm not. Go ahead. And about the space of one hour after another, confidently affirmed, saying, of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. Like he is. Go ahead. And Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, <laughs> while he yet spake, the cock crew. Go ahead. Watch the, this. 51, watch this. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. The Lord saw him. The Lord turned and looked at him. And Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord. So he saw, so he caught eye contact. Because he was afar off him. And the Lord looked at him when he said it. And Peter looked at him when he said it. Go ahead. How he had said unto him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Go ahead. Before the and cock Peter crow twice, you shalt deny me thrice. Go ahead. And Peter went out and wept. Bitterly. Because he looked, he was guilty now. So the Lord looked at him. So remember, remember what I told you? He didn't say it, but he looked at him like, remember what I told you you were going to do? Go ahead. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. Go ahead. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked so him, saying. So what are we saying, stopping at? 62? Yeah, 62, we're, right? Yeah. Show you. Remind me. John 18, verse 1. John 18, verse 1. Now we're going to get John. We read Matthew, Mark, Luke's account, John 18, verse 1. John chapter 18, verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. 
Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? You're looking for. Go ahead. They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. I am he. Go ahead. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. Go ahead. And as soon, as soon then as he had said the, unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. He knocked them down when he said, I am he. The power in his words knocked them to the ground. You would think after that, they'd leave him alone. But their hatred is still there. Like, nah, we're going to kill this guy regardless. Go ahead. Then asked he them again. After they fell and got back up. Go ahead. Whom seek ye? Who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake so this of. Is, so he did this after Judas kissed him, they came forward, and that's when this took place. You understand? Don't understand that they confused. This took place after Judas went and kissed him. And he said, Betray, stop me with a kiss. We're out thou friend. This took place after that. This is left out. Out of the three accounts. You understand? Go ahead. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake of them which thou gavest me. Have I lost none? They were going, they, their plan was to take all twelve, take all of them. Their plan was to take all eleven because twelve is you know twelve is the devil, this Judas. But take all, all Christ and the eleven. Go ahead. Then yeah. Simon, go on, go ahead. but you notice that he had to show them his power for them to stop doing right. it because that came for all of them. So he's saying that if you're gonna go that way, I can go that way too in case if you want it. Right. You understand? That's what he yep. tell them. He said, if you're gonna go that way, I can go that way. Right. He struck some fear in them, a little bit of fear in them. Just by his words alone, yes. I am he. Oh, snap, they all fall on the floor. Okay, looking for who he's looking for again? He's, Christ is flexing. That's what he's doing. He's, yeah. he's flexing. Go ahead. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it. Ah, now we know. Then Simon Peter, John reveals who it was that pulled the sword out. Go ahead. Having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The right ear. Go ahead. The servant's name was Malchus. And John tells you his name was Malchus. Go ahead. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which is my fa- the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? I gotta do it. I gotta do this. You manned up. I gotta, I gotta do this. Go ahead. Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first. Let him away to Annas first. Go ahead. For he was father in law to Caiaphas. Which was the high priest that same year. Yeah, two ki- high priests that year. Annas and Caiaphas, which was, which was wrong. We only have one. But it, Jews, the others being wicked, they had two. So Annas, being related to Caiaphas, he was also a high priest. So they brought him to Annas first. This is not mentioned in the other, in the other Gospels. It mentions Caiaphas only. John mentions it. He met Annas first. Then Caiaphas he, met, he meets later on. Go ahead. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. So Caiaphas mentioned this in John 11. He told him, listen, someone's supposed to die for us. A man is supposed to die for us. He knew that, but being, again, being filled with evil and wickedness, he still had him killed anyway because of that envy, that power, because Christ was taking power from them. Believe it, they were losing their followers and they were following him. Christ instead, he was competition. Get rid of the competition. I don't care who he is. Go ahead. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Uh uh-huh, another one. So the, somebody else mentioned it. Somebody else is following along with, along with um, Peter. Go ahead. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. Go ahead. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went. That's how, that's how he was able to see. That's how, able, that's how Christ was able to give him the eye contact because he was close by the door. They were all counseling in a room. The door was open, and Peter stood by the door, and when he, he denied him, Christ looked over at him in the doorway. He looked at him and he ran away crying. You understand? I'm painting, he's painting the full picture now. It's coming together. Go ahead. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. Let him, let him come in. Let him come in. Let, let, he's with me. Let him come in. Let him, let him be here. Go ahead. Then say of the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Are not thou also of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. Uh-huh. And the servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals. Remember that? Go for, ahead. For it was cold. For it was a cold spring night. So he warmed his hands. Go ahead. And they warmed them. And they warmed themselves. Peter was there. Go ahead. 
And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Remember that? Go ahead. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I have a taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. Why askest, askest thou me? Ask them which heard me. What, have I, what I have said unto them, behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. What did I say? If I spoke evil, what did I say? Go ahead. But if well, why smitest thou I'm me? I'm writing what I'm saying. What you hit me for? Go ahead. Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. That's what Matthew, Mark, and Luke deal with, Caiaphas. So Annas sent him to Caiaphas. You understand? Go ahead. But he saw Annas first. Where we at? What verse? 25. We're going to read to verse um, 28. 28. Okay. And the guy that let him in, the, the high priest knew, was John. John that wrote this is the same John that the high priest knew. That let Peter in. You understand? Go ahead. And Simon Peter stood and warned himself, warmed himself. They said, therefore, unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, uh -huh. being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, uh -huh. saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? You cut my cousin's ear off. Wasn't you there? John puts that in there. Go ahead. Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas, into the hall of judgment. Pilate's house. Go ahead. And it was early. And it was early. Go ahead. And was, they themselves. Remember the cock crew. So it's getting early now. Early hours. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Go ahead. The Passover is going into the bread and so forth from the offerings that they sacrificed, the priests. Go ahead. That was wait, 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 wait. So, Aiton, so this took place on the Passover right. they was killing Christ. Right. You understand? Because some, some people said that, no, that, that, did, that didn't take place on the Passover. It did. It's, it, it's on the Passover. Right. They kept the Passover, so it's taking place in the Passover. It's leading to the morning hours. Go ahead. Of the That's same day, the 15th day. Remember, remember, remember a day, even to even. Remember the class I brought out before? Even. And then when the morning ends, another even comes, it's another, another day. You understand? This is the morning hours of the same day. You understand? Go ahead. That was 28. Go ahead. Uh, 28. All right. Uh. Already show up. Matthew 27 and verse 1. Matthew 27, verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Go on. Go on. Read on, read the verse, uh, just read down, read on. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned. He saw they were going to kill Christ now. He was, maybe he said, leave him away safely. <laughs> he said, now we're going to kill this guy. So when Judas realized they were, they were going to kill Christ, go ahead. When he saw he that he was condemned, repented himself, and bought again the 30 pieces of silver. Bought the money back that they gave him, go ahead. To the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that What is that to us? So what? See thou to that. That's your business. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the, the temple. Go ahead. And departed and went and hanged himself. And he went and killed himself. He realized what he had done. He got the Messiah killed. Go ahead. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. It's blood money. Go ahead. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Yep. Wherefore, that That's field... That's where the term potter's field comes from. The people are poor and they can't afford a funeral. They throw them into a ditch called the potter's field. All right? And throw their body in there. Of some, some grave sites have it. It's called the potter's field where the poor... Bur people's bodies are just thrown to a ditch, and that's it. No, no tombstone, just thrown to a ditch and buried. It's the worst. No value. Right, no value, right. Where, wherefore, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. That's what they called the field of blood until this day. So they bought that field with Judas's blood money. Go ahead and call it the field of blood. Go ahead. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, 
And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. Right. And Judas and Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked, asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. You say. Go ahead. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. You say no, you say a word. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? You don't hear them these guys speaking evil have all these things against you? You don't have anything to say for yourself? Go ahead. And he answered him to ne to never a word. You didn't say nothing. And so much that the governor marveled greatly. Now at the feast, the governor was wont to release the people a prisoner, whom they would. And they, ha and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Read it again. For he knew that for envy... They had delivered. So the white man caught on. He said, you guys, you hate this brother. You don't want him dead because he's wicked. You want him dead because you hate him. The white man caught on to it. Go ahead. Yeah, hold ahead. on. So Esau caught on with it, but Esau still, still took part in it. Mm -hmm. You understand? For his own political gains and so forth, mm -hmm. Pilate took, took, played part in murdering Christ. Mm -hmm. You understand? Even though he know... What the what what the, what our forefathers was all for envy they was delivering up for he see all of that, but but the Lord's will had to be fulfilled. Yeah. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him saying, "Have thou nothing to do with that just man? That man alone. Go ahead. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. I've dreamed about this man. Don't touch him. Leave him alone. Go ahead." But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Go ahead. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Go ahead. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do to then? What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. So you kill him. Go ahead. Because and we the, can't on the feast day. You do it. Go ahead. And the governor said, why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. Kill him. When they have no reason. Go ahead. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Listen, this is y'all business. I wash my hands of this. Y'all doing this because y'all hate him? That's y'all work. Y that's y'all business. Go ahead and do it. See you to it. He didn't have to do that. But to win, to, but in order to maintain an alliance with them, he says, all right, go ahead and do it. Go ahead. Then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and our, on our children. Our people are evil as hell. Let his blood be on us and our children. We'll take the blame. If he's, guilt, if he's, if he's innocent, we'll take the fault. But on us and our children, and it is on us today. Hey, Deacon, to show you how evil, how evil our people is, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we got our, our we got two sisters. You know, I think a couple weeks ago, they, they, they fast to the Most High and pray to the Most High to destroy our UIC. Yeah. <laughs> you heard that one? Yeah. They did, a, they did a fast and pray to God to destroy our UIC. I said, damn, that's some evil stuff right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> That's how evil our people is, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you should have ate. You failed. <laughs> Read on. Wasted dinner. <laughs> Go ahead. Then, re verse 26. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. So I, I, he beat him. Then had him killed. Had him whipped first. Then had him be killed. Wicked as hell. Go ahead. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, 
king of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. Uh. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on. And they led him away to crucify him. Mocking him. Disrespecting him. Go ahead. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. You carry his cross. Go ahead. And when they were gone unto a place called Gothgotha, Gogotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink. Keep that mingled, in mind. They gave him vinegar to drink. Keep that in mind. Mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. Go ahead. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, they parted my garments among them. Oh, that's all I want. Thirty-five. Okay. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Uh huh. That's all I wanted. It was fulfilled prophecy. I'm referring to uh, that's in Psalms 22 regarding the parting his garments. David saw through, Christ spoke about that happening to him through David in Psalms 22, from verse one down. That's Christ speaking through David. Verse one down, Psalms 22. Go to Mark 15:21. Mark 15, 21. Mark 15, verse 21. And they compel one Simon of Cyren- uh, Cyrenean, who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. Same thing, same guy. Go ahead. He just mentions his two sons' names. Go ahead. And they bring him unto a place, unto the place, Golgotha. Which is being interpreted the place of a skull. Uh huh, but earlier. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them. Uh huh. What every man should take. And it was the third hour, and, and they it, crucified him. And it was the what? And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. Now remember, the cock crew is early. It was the third hour. Who knows what hour that is? It was the third hour. It was the third hour. Yes. Stand up. It was the third hour. Shalom, Deacon. Shalom. Uh, The third hour will be 9 a.m. Thank you. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. You follow? That's the third hour for the haters. 9 a.m. You understand? For the confused out there, 9 a.m. Third hour is 9 a.m. Follow? Everyone understand that so far? Third hour is 9. Keep that in mind. The third hour is 9 a.m. 9 in the morning. Go ahead. We're going to read the verse. uh, What verse is that? That's verse. We're in verse 26 now. That's verse 25. Uh, Jump to verse. No, go to Matthew 27. Matthew 27 and verse 36. Third hour, 9 a.m., right. Crucified. So he was crucified. Matthew 27. Oh, sure. It was the third hour, right. So he got he got crucified, hung, uh, 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 lynching, at 9 in the morning. It started. He got hung at 9 a.m. Matthew 27, 36. Matthew 27, verse 36. Right. And sitting down, they watched him there and set up over his head his accusation written, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Mocking him. Go ahead. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. So uh, people were killed. That was Roman capital punishment. It wasn't just Christ that got killed by the cross. Many were killed on the cross. That's why wearing the cross is dumb because many were killed on the cross before him and many were killed long after him on the cross. You're not honoring him, with a, not honoring him wearing the cross. It's ridiculously stupid. It was a form of capital punishment. It's like, honoring a, it's like wearing a noose in your neck. It makes no sense. You understand? Read on. We're going to read the verse um, 43. Verse 39. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroys the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. Mocking his words. Go ahead. If thou be the son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. If he will save him, for he said, I am the son of God. See what happened? Well, he said, I am the son of God. 
get Wisdom of Solomon 5. Let's see if Solomon saw that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter, this chapter 5. What was the chapter this week? 5, right? Chapter 5. No, chapter 2. Chapter 2. 2 and verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, let us lie and wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn, and he is clean contrary to our doings. He upbraideth us with our offending the law, an objective to our infamy, the transgressings of our education. He professeth to have the knowledge of God, and calleth himself the child of the Lord. The son of God. Go ahead. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us even to behold. We can't stand him. Go ahead. For his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. We're fake. We're, wick- we're wicked. Con- hypocrites. Go ahead. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounceth the end of the just to be blessed. And maketh his boast that God is his father. Yeah. Let us see if his words be true. And let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. For if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Watch this. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Yeah. Let us condemn him with a shameful death. For by his own saying he shall be respected. Such things they did imagine. And were deceived, for their own wickedness hath blinded them. And that, you have that same thing going on outside of IRC now. They did the same thing right here. Speak evil of us, slander us, same thing. But the, why? Because it says their wickedness has blinded them. The elders and Pharisees knew that Christ was who he said he was. But their wickedness and hatred towards him, their envy of them that Pilate saw was so strong, they said, man, to hell with this dude. Kill him anyway. So Simon saw that in the spirit. Simon sang exactly what the Pharisees were saying in the spirit. Yeah, to God back, the words of the wicked. Yeah. To back you up, Atan, because what you just said, the statement you just made, that these people we never had problem with. Mm-hmm. You understand? Then we always walk a, a white line when it gets to the commandments. These people now, they turn against us saying that we are evil. You know, people you never sit down and talk to. How the hell you know I'm evil? Mm-hmm. How the hell you know that brother diva? How the hell? Because so much hate for IUIC. Turn into, you know what I mean? Turn into like things you don't even need. Things, things don't even need pop up in your mind. Just because you heard it, I'm going to go with it anyway. Yep. Exactly. Go to Matthew 27 and verse 44. Going back there again. Uh, uh, yeah, hold on. Hey, hold on, Atan. Mm-hmm. In Wisdom of Solomon, right? That's the one you just left, right? Give me that part when it's saying he was made to reprove our thoughts. Yeah. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 14. Mm-hmm. He was made to reprove our thoughts. Mm-hmm. He is grievous unto us even to behold, but because his life is not like other men's. Yeah, because a lot of times people don't understand that. I mean, when we get like, we lead it here, we sit there, we like, we already know what brother's going to do before they do it. Because sometimes we're able to see that, uh, how he or her think. You understand? Because people are people willing to just be persuaded by, the, by any, any words. Why? Because their thoughts, because of their thoughts. You know what I mean? They'll be able to persuade through their thoughts. Then they really think whatever they think, whatever they, they believe it is true. You understand? But Christ saying that, that's why he's saying that he knows their thoughts. He knows how they think. He knows how they move. You understand? He knows everything about them. Why do you think he's saying that? You got it? Yes. Because... A lot of our people, you know what they will do? The same brother, the same sisters, that who, who claim that they've been watching, they've been watching us for a while. They see the Christ in us. They see this and that has not been proved yet. You got that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you want you want to bring something? You got it. You got something? All right. No, go ahead. Bring me a scripture. Right. Go to. Uh, thank God. I'm glad you got that. Thank you. Luke, uh, get uh, Matthew 27, verse 44. Matthew chapter 27, verse 44. The thieves also, which were crucified with them, cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the, all the land until the ninth hour. So it says from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. So now from the sixth hour. So he was, on, he was put in the cross when? 
the third hour. Now it's the sixth hour. So from 9 a.m., what, what time, don't call out, what time is the sixth hour? Don't call out, what time is the sixth hour? Who knows when the sixth hour is? The sixth hour. That would be noon. That would be noon, 12 p.m. So, so far, he's on that cross for three hours. He's hanging for three hours. All right? Three hours. So, it says from the ninth hour, it says from the ninth hour, no, sixth hour, and then, and then what? Read again, 45 again. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land then unto the so, ninth so, hour. Well, so, there, so, from the time of 12, it's dark outside now. It's dark. Is that normal? That's why I mentioned it. Because if it was normal, I wouldn't be mentioning it. So because it's 12 p.m., it shouldn't be dark. It's noon. It's 12 o'clock. And so it says from, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. What's the ninth hour? Don't call out. What's the ninth hour? Third hour is nine. Sixth hour is 12. What is the ninth hour? Yes. Astronomical. Three. 3 p.m. Yeah. Thank you. 3 p.m. Still on the cross. 3 p.m. Nine to three. How long is that? Six hours. You hang up for six hours. It's a long time. All right? So it was, it was darkness from 12 to 3. From 12 o'clock to 3 p.m., it was darkness all over. You understand? Read a verse um, 45 again. Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Over all the land unto the ninth hour. So it says land here. So maybe it was the clouds. Maybe it was cloudy. It's going to rain. Oh, okay. All over the land to the ninth hour. From 12 to 3, it was dark. Get Mark 15, 33. Mark now. 15, 33. Mark 15, verse... 30, 33. Three, yes. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land unto the, until the ninth hour. So when it hit 12 o'clock, it got dark, and it was dark until 3. You understand? 12 or 3, it was dark. It got started getting dark at 12, dark until 3 o'clock. Y'all follow? Over all the whole land, right? The whole land. Get Luke 22, verse 1. Let's see what Luke says regarding it. Luke 22, over all the land. Luke 22, verse 1. Luke 22, verse 1. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surname Iscariot. Then, well, read, again, read verse 3 again. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Who entered into Judas? Satan stepped in. I'll take it from here, Judas. I got this. I'll take the wheel. Satan stepped into Judas. Satan, take the wheel. <laughs> Satan, take the wheel. Go ahead. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. One of the twelve. The and one that had the spiritual power, an elder, a leader, over other disciples under them. Satan stepped into this man. Right with Christ. Welcome with Christ. One of the highest honors ever for a man to have on this earth. Satan said, I take it from here. Go ahead. And he went thank, his thank way. You. I appreciate you. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate you. Go ahead. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. Go ahead. And they were glad. What and, were they? And they were glad. So when Satan entered into this dude, the Pharisees was like, yes, we got somebody. Yes. They were glad. Go ahead. And covenanted to give him money. Uh -huh. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. In the absence of the 12, of the 11. They knew they were going to go against him for that. Go to, go to chapter 23 and verse 1. Chap Luke chapter 23, verse 1. Yeah. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation. And forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Now that's a lie. Because when they asked him, 
what do we do regarding paying um, tribute? He said, run unto Caesar with Caesar's, unto God that's God. So these people, now they're lying now. Go ahead. And Pilate asked him, saying, art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, thou sayest it. You say I'm king. Go ahead. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. I find no fault in this guy. Go ahead. And they were the more fierce, saying, he stareth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. So in their anger, they're revealing why they hate him. He's teaching everywhere. You see, in their anger, he start spreading out their hatred for him. He's teaching all the Jewry. Yeah. We're everywhere. losing followers. IUIC is everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. I can't, I, purple rain, I can't stand it. Yeah. That's what's happening. Right. Yeah, uh, every time I open my media, every time I open my TV, it's IUIC. Right. I go to uh, Facebook, is IUIC. Right. I go to Twitter, is IUIC. I go to Instagram, is IUIC. Mm -hmm. Damn, what's wrong with these cats? I <laughs> cannot stand them. <laughs> they sit down watching BT. Is <laughs> <laughs> IUIC. <laughs> right, the commercial. They're BT watching American Housewife, and they see IUIC pop up. They're like, damn, these dudes are all over them. Yeah. <laughs> Do you rest five again? And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. Go ahead. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. He's Galilean? Go ahead. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction. So Herod was over Galilee. That was his jurisdiction. Okay, he's over Galilee. This isn't my jurisdiction. This isn't my business. Go to Herod. Let him deal with him. Let them You go deal with Herod then. Go ahead. He sent him to Herod who himself also was at Jerusalem at the time. And when Herod saw Jesus... This wasn't mentioned but he, among anybody else. Matthew didn't mention this, so Mark they didn't mention this. Go ahead. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad. Oh, it's you. I heard about you. For Christ, he, is Christ is popular. Go ahead. For he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. He then wants to see he, a sign. He, like the heathen. He wants to see a sign. Go ahead. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. That's ignored him. Christ didn't talk to heathens. He ignored them. Like that woman that cried and begged for her child to be healed, he ignored her because he didn't deal with it. He didn't entertain heathens like that. Stay silent. He didn't entertain them. Go ahead. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him again to Pilate. Go ahead. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. So these guys hate each other, but they both took time to disrespect Christ at the same time. Go ahead. And, and, you're, and you're, you'll see that today? Yeah. You got people that hate each other. And they all add out to us. But yep. they have one goal in common. I ain't going to say what it is. You all that spiritual. You all look and see for yourself. Yep. All right, they all hate each other. They all teach in different doctrine, but the common ground is who? It's, 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 it's to do what? Mm. It's to destroy these men right here, destroy mm -hmm. these, these people right here. You all pay attention to what's going on, man. Read on. In the same, verse 12, In the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for they were at enmity between themselves. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests, and the rulers and the people said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, I have examined him before you. Have and sorry. Behold, I, 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 having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof ye accuse him. I examined it, and he didn't do nothing you guys are saying he did. You guys are liars. Go ahead. No, nor yet Herod. Herod didn't find the evidence of this. Go ahead. For I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. Go ahead. I will therefore chastise him and release him. I'll beat him and give him back to you. That's it. Go ahead. For of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. The Passover at the feast. Go ahead. The feast is seven days straight. Go ahead. And they We're still on the first day, the morning hours. Go ahead. And they cried out all at once, saying... Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for, mur and for murder was cast into prison. Go ahead. Pilate, therefore. So they, they said, rather than let go of a free man, release a murderer instead. Someone said, hate him. 
a guilty man, guilty of murder, who's locked up, let him go and kill Christ. Go ahead. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. Yeah. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. Fine, go ahead and do it. Go ahead. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. Go ahead. To their and, will. Go ahead. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one, Simon, a Cyrenian. From the father of Alexander and Rufus. Remember that? Go ahead. A Cyrenian coming out of the country. And on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. Verse 27. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. What of verse 32? But G Keep reading to 32 or skip to 32? Skip to verse 32. Verse 32. And so there, there, were women that, there were women that followed behind him. Verse 32. And there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. On his right hand, on his left. Um, read on. Read down to verse 36. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, they were crucified. They were, they, there Calvary they crucified. Is, Calvary is Golgotha, place of a skull. It's the same place. Mm -hmm. Calvary, Golgotha, same place. Calvary, Golgotha, place of a skull. Same exact place. Go ahead. There they crucified him, and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Go ahead. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Y'all remember that. Go ahead. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. The psalmist showed us. Go ahead. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. Well, he spit it out. He didn't want that. That's in Luke, I believe. Um, go to verse 44 and 45. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Over what? Over all the earth until the ninth hour. Over all the earth. Not the land. Over all the earth. So what kind of darkness can cause the whole earth to get dark? Ezekiel, go ahead. I know you want to say it. It was uh, it's a solar eclipse. A solar eclipse. Hold on. What is required for there to be a solar eclipse? What's required uh, for a solar eclipse to take place? Do you know? Wait, what is required? Uh, for a solar eclipse to take place. That's what's when, required? That's when the sun is completely covered. By what? Uh, that's when the soul is, is by the moon. Which 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 moon? The full moon. By a full moon? What? By by the moon. Mm, no, not by the full moon. That's a lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse. Sorry. But it's a solar eclipse. What covers the solar? What, what covers the sun during a solar eclipse? Wait, you sure? No, no. That's all right. You do know. Just think about it. Uh, Elahu. What's required for a solar eclipse? Uh. When the moon is fully dark. Thank you. A black moon has to cover the sun for a solar eclipse. A full moon covers the sun for a lunar eclipse. Understand? So a black moon covers the sun. That is a solar eclipse because it covers the sun, sun eclipse. The sun is eclipsed by the moon, the black one. So during the time the Messiah was on the cross during Passover, what moon was out? What moon was out during the Passover? Anyone know what moon was out during the Passover? I got to call on y'all to ask you what moon was out during the Passover. I just said it. That's what I'm talking about. This bashfulness. The yes. full moon. A what? The full moon. Yeah, pass it. No, pass the mic over. Y'all ain't paying attention. Pass it over to the left. Yeah, stand up. Brother Jordan. No, not you. I've been, been to the back. And you excited. I'll give you the next question. Yes. The black moon. Huh? The black moon. The black moon. The black moon was around... During the Passover, two weeks prior to that, 14 days prior to Passover, what moon was present that we used to determine the Passover? Some of y'all, I'm telling you, man. 
Who doesn't understand? Raise your hand. Who doesn't understand my question? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, what moon do we use to count the feasts? I'm going to ask again. What moon, which moon, do we, which phase of moon do we use to count the feasts? The full moon, right? So what moon was out during the Passover? The black one, right? Okay, let me help you out. Every two weeks, you have a black, you have a full moon, then two weeks later, you have a black one. Two weeks later, a full one again. Two weeks later, a black one again. You all right? So in order for them to determine when Passover was, right? Remember, Passover is 14 days later, right? After the moon, you have Passover, right? You understand what I'm talking about? You count 14 days after the new moon, and it gives you Passover. Who doesn't understand that? Okay. So if the moon was black during Passover, right? Two, 14 days prior to that, what moon was it that he used? Full moon. Then you know the full moon is a new moon. You cannot have a solar eclipse during a full moon. Unless it's at night. This Ooh. is at 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. This is not nighttime. You cannot knock the full moon. You cannot knock it. It's impossible. Yo, Deacon, I thought, man, I wonder why these guys hit you, bro. Listen, man, they hit you with a passion. They hit the whole team of IUIC. And say, these, yeah. they, these guys, I need to get. Yes, hold, that. hold on to that. They say, these later. guys, I need to get rid of them. You know why I need to get rid of IUIC? Because these guys, they can stop me from my wickedness. You understand? I, that's a bunch of wicked Israelites out here, man. You understand? Now we right. not like uh, hold on, yeah, I done. <laughs> we gonna police this. We gonna police these unruly. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't wanna bring it out. Negroes. Yeah, Negroes. You understand? That's why they cannot stand us. Now they will see the treatment of God. We are not black men. We are Israelites. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.